Is Arlie Ermy the dad you wish you had? Was your ASVAB score in the single digits? Did you ever manage to break a Nokia phone? Do you have an EGA tattooed somewhere on your body? Have you ever described yourself as having chimp strength? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, boy, do we have the night vision housing for you. Welcome back to Custom Night Vision, the only source for bespoke night vision solutions. Today we're going to discuss offerings from AB Night Vision. We have three different housing examples on the table, the RMBG, the RPMBG, and the ARMBG. Uh, to get started, I, I kind of want to talk about what they all have in common. First and foremost, they all take a CR123 battery. AB Night Vision quotes like 16 to 18 hours runtime but they also include a Limo port. That is a four pin port here in the housing of all three units that allows for you to plug in an Anvis style battery pack or one from AB Night Vision like this. The AB Night Vision battery pack takes uh, double A's or CR123's. They come with a cable and it plugs into the device using this Limo plug. This is not to be confused with a L3 style uh, Fisher port, they are, they're not the same, they're not compatible. So keep that in mind, you know, if you buy one of these and you need to go buy a battery pack, just make sure it's the Anvis style connector. All of the housings on the table are machined out of Billet 7075, that's aircraft grade aluminum. They are extremely durable. Um, there's lots of video on the internet of people running these over with trucks, it's pretty ridiculous. Typically the optics will fail before the night vision housing does. All the devices on the table also include an IR illuminator on the RMBG, it's right here. See, it's actually a really good IR illuminator by night vision housing standards. How you activate the IR illuminator varies between the housings. All three of these housings on the table are what we call 10160 format, or they take tubes that are not formatted to work with manual gain. So. All three of these devices are gonna be in the fixed gain configuration. They are submersible to 66 feet, and they come with a five-year warranty on the housing through the manufacturer. Now I wanna discuss what makes them unique. To get started, I wanna discuss the RMBG. This is what's known as a fixed bridge style housing, similar to Anvis goggles that you'll see all over the place. Um, essentially, these two pods ride on a rail or a bridge in between. They use a common power supply. IPD distance can be adjusted with these jack screws. These pods will move in or, in or out independently. Like I stated earlier, they use a single CR123 and a battery housing here in between the two pods. And they utilize a PVS14 style turning switch like that. Positive feedback when you turn it off or on. So you get to the IR illuminator, you pull it out, turn it, just like a PVS-14. Very robust switch, it's nice, it feels good. The RMBG is surprisingly lightweight considering that it is constructed out of 7075 aluminum. Um, it is arguably the most durable night vision housing on the market. These things are basically indestructible. With RPO glass installed, I believe they're around 490 grams which means they are pretty close to like 31 alpha weight. They're a little bit heavier, but you know, providing the durability that comes with an RMBG, and then when you include the RPO lightweight optics, it's really hard to beat. And the price point on these is uh, exceptional. The next housing on the table I wanna discuss is the RPMBG. This housing is very similar to the RMBG in a lot of ways, but it's also a lot different. There were some improvements made on this housing and some added features that I'd like to discuss. Obviously the big selling feature for this housing is the panning function. This housing allows you to pan each tube out from 40 degrees or a total 40 degree field of view to 65. Uh, this is a pretty cool feature. I'm not sure how practical it is. It does, it does work well, however, in my opinion, I'm kind of a traditionalist. I like my 40 degree field of view. Uh, 60 Vive does provide better situational awareness. However, be aware that when 
the device is panned out like this, you're not going to get the best clarity in the center of your vision. Instead of looking through the center of the tube where the highest resolution, or the highest uh, image performance is, you're going to be looking through zone two or zone three, which in many tubes is gonna provide a slightly degraded image quality. Is this a big deal? I would say it's all personal preference. Uh, some of the improvements made to the RPMVG over the RMVG are the way we uh, adjust interpupillary distance. On this housing, they use a, a push button, a spring loaded um, locking mechanism. Essentially, there's two buttons here that you can depress and move the pods in and out independently. It also uses the CR123 forward facing, just like the RMBG. Um, on this housing, they went to a push button style control system. So the power button is a push on and off. It's got a very tactile feedback to it. The IR illuminator button is the same, but it has a gate or gated bit of material around it to prevent inadvertent actuation. This is good if you're in a situation where you're using night vision, someone else might be using night vision, and you don't want to inadvertently give away your position. So cool housing, feature packed, again, very durable, comes with a five-year warranty through the manufacturer. The final housing I want to discuss on the table, the ARMBG. It's a new offering from AB Night Vision, and I've been playing around with it the last few nights. I really like this thing a lot. It still provides all the same durability that we've come to accept, expect with the AB Night Vision products, but now they've added the articulation. This housing has a lot of features in it that are very useful. They've taken a lot of feedback from their customers and come up with a really awesome product. Just like the RPMVG, we've got push button uh, power and IR illuminator control. The IR illuminator, again, has is, is got like a gated material around it. Very nice. One of the obvious changes you can see right off the bat is they've taken the battery compartment and they've turned it around 180. This makes it a little bit easier to change the battery while it's on your helmet. The Limo port is now on the back of the device as well. This kind of gets the power cable out of your way and it makes it a little bit easier to work around it. I really like the way they did this. I think they knocked it out of the park. This device or this housing does have independent pod cutoff and they've executed this feature better than anybody else has so far in my opinion. Having the ability to articulate your pods up and out of the way provides the user with a lot more flexibility and comfort when it's stowed on your head. If you haven't watched any of our other videos, we've talked about the importance or the benefit of articulating housings. And basically being able to articulate your pods up or out of the way or wherever you need them to be offers really two benefits to me. One, when you're in a vehicle or moving around in structures that have low ceilings, you can stow the pods like this instead of up on top of your head. It's just gonna lower your overall profile and limit the amount of snag hazards or potential damage you can do to your expensive night vision. Um, it also provides the benefit of more comfort for the user when the night vision is completely stowed on top of your head. For example, with a fixed bridge system, when it's on the mount and you flip it up, a lot of the weight of the night vision is gonna be forward of your face. And essentially this creates like a fulcrum effect in your neck that's going to cause a lot of strain over time. It may not seem like a lot when you pick this up, but you know, as you extend weight over distances, it, it starts to act more, um, especially over time, on the muscles supporting them. With an articulating system, when you stow them up and they're on top of your helmet like this, you can roll these pods back against the helmet and it's going to move a lot of the weight of the night vision over the center line of your head, essentially pressing straight down instead of forward and down. So over time, it's a lot more comfortable to wear. This housing uh, passed all the mil spec requirements for drop testing, it exceeded them. Uh, 
As far as I can tell, with all the destructive testing they did on this housing, the optics failed long before any component of the housing did. So good on AV Night Vision. They've knocked it out of the park again with an extremely durable offering. This housing is currently available in black and FDE. Another added feature that I kind of like is they've put lanyard anchors here on the side of the pods. So it, it gets your lanyard out of the way of all the uh, dovetail interface. It's in practice when I'm actually using this, I like these a lot better. When I first picked them up, I wasn't sure, but when you're attaching your retention lanyard up here close to the bridge, sometimes it can be cumbersome to reattach it to the dovetail if you're taking your night vision on and off frequently. Uh, really like these. They're on our website now. We've got a few units ready to ship as well as housings, um, empty housings in stock if you want to build one out custom. We appreciate you watching our videos. If you have any questions, get in contact with us. Give us a call, shoot us an email, DM us on any of our social medias, and please go comment. Let's have a discussion. What do you think of the ARMVG? Are you a big fan of the RMVG? Have you owned one of these units before? I would love to hear some feedback from you. It really helps us if you like, share, and subscribe our videos. We're trying to, to grow our reach so we can get this information out to more people. Thank you for watching. Y'all have a great day.